Hello there. Today I'd like to introduce you to my latest um, junk journal. And this one is made to try using the rings to act as the binding. So external rings put through holes in each of the pages to hold this book together, this journal together. I had um, a lovely recipe book that I was going to take around to a local uh, thrift store to dispose of it. I hate getting rid of my recipe books but I needed to downsize and this was one I simply didn't use. When I looked through it just to make sure there were none of the recipes I wanted to to uh, retain, I realised that this, the reason I must have bought the book was simply the illustrations and the mixed media looking photographs and images that were used throughout the, the book. So rather than pass it on to somebody else, I actually disemboweled the book and have used the pages and this, this is what the result. I was also very keen to, to try these this binding system because I don't think I've ever made one with these external rings. I've used them with the the folder binder ring um, component that goes inside a cover but I've not done it with these so this is my first effort and I quite like it. The convenience of being able to remove and add to the pages or shuffle them about or relocate them, whatever you want, is great. I'm not enamoured of anything that has a protruding um, spine like this, but that's just a minor thing. That's the nature of the beast and you can't be without it. I did have some small binder, some small rings that I probably about... Um, five centimetres that were just too small because it's quite a few pages in here. So I've bought these from AliExpress and these are 7.5 centimetre rings and so they just make all the difference in the amount that I can get into the into the folder. Um, again it is 99.9% .9 scraps. I've recycled this little piece of sock monkey fabric that I've had for ages because of the graphic nature of the pages that I wanted to use. It seemed a perfect time to use this up because there was only a small amount. Um, I've used some of it for little tags, such as this little tag on the on the dangle. There's a, nothing much there, just some anodized um, blue, red, and green anodized safety pins, a little Tim Holtz Imagine word disc, and a little purple uh, tassel. Just to have something dangly on those lovely big rings that seem too good a chance to miss. Little nameplate on the front and I've just roughly stamped monkey business on that because it seemed appropriate. I didn't have grommets large enough to um, accommodate the thickness of the cover or the thickness of the rings when I when I sort of tried to work it out. I just didn't have them. So what I did was I, I, I um, chomped out the ring, the holes with my big bite or the cropper dial, I'm not sure which I used, and then just adhered with very strong glue these metal washers over the over the hole so that they look like reinforcers and they'll just help um, preventing any wear and tear in that area. I used smaller ones on the inside. The covers are, let me just check, about 19 or 7 and a half inches, 19 centimetres, or by, uh, it's about 10, just over 10 and a half inches, 27 centimetres in length. Inside the front and back cover I've added a pocket. This one is a, a brush -o piece, and in there I've got a few. There's another piece of the fabric. I've just adhered it onto some heavy cardstock and cut that out with that, I think it's top note or big note die. I think that was a Stampin' Up! Beast die. Um, I've used these black and red tags throughout. And there's one of the black ones with a little bit of um, florist ribbon attached to the top. And these, and this one's a postcard. I've just gone with anything that had that nice graphic sort of style and this was um, a birthday card. I like to keep birthday cards that have uh, images 
and they make great additions to this sort of journal. Throughout the book, and I'll just show you, I've got some stacked here. The pages, there you can see, I've pulled out, and this one I've adhered the eggplants onto the back of that, and that I could make into another page if I want one. This one is two pieces again, that one with a duck, this one with a potato ad box, and that one I've made into a pocket. Um, sealed at the bottom and I'm going to um, simply add and all I did was take a piece of cardstock score it down the middle and then adhere it onto the edge to give me a um, a nice firm addition to punch the holes through and so that's all I've done I've still got several of these there's a lovely one there with some chooks on it and you can see what I mean about this sort of mixed media look of the pages. This one is a collage of um, dictionary paper with looks like gessoed eggs over the top. I found this bit of chooky paper in another page and so I've just adhered that over the top. Here's another lovely one that's uh, cherries in grappa and tomatoes and I've just adhered them together to make them big enough to use. So I've still got some pages to add and that might mean but if I do make those up, I'll turn this into a, a second book. But at the moment, I'll just take you through what I did. This is um, an espresso advertising. Every now and then they'll come out with some really graphic uh, illustrations and it's always on nice weight cardstock. So I've used that, turned it into a pocket. And there's another little postcard just in there. These pages um, are all, I've used that same process of adhering this, an extra strip down the side and this is simply a piece of A4 paper folded in half with the side strip added to give me um, a bit of reinforcing for punching the holes. And these are all open, top and bottom, but it's easy to put a little gusset up inside there and seal it off if you want to or some washi tape or something and put a tag in the top if you wanted to. But I think I see this book being used as a glue book or a diary or something like that. Probably a glue book. Um, and so these pages can be just left as they are and have things adhered to them. And the same with these. These are larger. These are the recipe book pages and you can see um, they're a good size for adding photos to or for glue booking or whatever. This panel on most of these, this creamy colour, was some strips given to me by, I don't know, about, um, what were they? They were about maybe seven centimetres wide from, from a, pr a friend of my husband's who's a printer and he gave him these manila strips that had been trimmed off something and they've come into their own. They've been very useful. Other pages, and I've used quite a few of these lighter copy paper with simply scraps of cardstock from my scrap bin. I've managed to empty out my scrap bin beautifully by doing it this way. There's a tag made from scraps of paper, a layer of, um, just a layer of, of cereal box between two layers of coloured scrap paper, a little piece of manila folder, this blue section, and so I've made that into a, um, a little pocket to put some tags in. Manila folder that I've used in another project. I've used up those scraps. As you can see, I haven't worried terribly much about the colours, so I have tried to make it a, a little cohesive. There's another one of those pockets. I added that to one of the white pages because that's a heavy white paper. It's um, probably... Uh, it's probably about 120 GSM in that one, whereas this is just 80 copy paper. There's, uh, you can see the lovely illustrations. How nice is that? This, it looks like gesso dictionary paper or newspaper with illustrations over the top. How could I not use that? This one looks like um, lined paper with um, 
doodling with shells. Some of the panels on the side for the hole punching I've taken from smaller scraps of the recipe book. As I say, I've used a lot of scraps of leftover cardstock. There's a lovely pig, I can't resist putting him in. So it goes, and it's just plain pages, and then the larger pages are the recipe from the recipe book. And so it goes on. It's made a lovely bright, um, lot of bright pages. I really like the way it's turned out. I like all the colour, which I'm getting more used to using. And it's given me a use for a recipe book that was of no use in other ways. Um, I love these paper cannoli. It's once made cardstock layered into cannoli shells, which was a gorgeous illustration. That's about it. There's nothing terribly original or new about this, but I just wanted to share it with you because I I like the way it's turned out. This was an, another page which I've added a, a gusset top and bottom and turned it into a pocket and I've got um, a few of the tags that I've been using the last remnants of the monkey fabric and a nice uh, it's a Barry Humphreys postcard from one of the art galleries I've visited and this this was a page from the recipe book but this was an espresso and there's two layers on black cardstock so there's this top piece and this piece I just layered them up to make it into the envelope and this little back one I've just got a couple of card fronts in there uh, I've got a friend who sends me interesting commercial cards and so I, I always keep those and hope to use them. They make wonderful um, photo maps or documentation pages. So that's it. As I said, as I'm using it more, this, these rings are, the pages are turning much more freely. So I'm anxious to see, oh, I was thinking this might be a good one to send to one of my grandsons for a glue book, um, but I'm thinking I might keep it just to see how it pans out, see how well it lasts um, with these rings. They feel, everything feels nice and sturdy at the moment. It's nice and robust. I'm not sure. I'll see. If I divide it up and make it into two with these extra pages that I've got, this one might go off to one of the, one of the smalls. There, as I say, there's very little new. The only thing that was new was the, probably the um, book cloth, which was from remnants from a roll I bought or a large piece that I bought some time ago. I like it to cover journals. It's very robust and gives a nice sturdy finish. So there we go. Talk to you soon. Bye now.